Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power in our lives. Father, we realize that everything that we do is for your glory. Help us to look beyond ourselves. Help us to look at the bigger picture, Father. There are so many needs in this community, Father. We're praying for this restoration center. And here's the great thing about that, Father. We don't need a building to do that. We are already a restoration center because you're here. Father, people are being physically healed right now. People, Father, are being spiritually healed right now. People are being emotionally healed right now, Father. I know this. I'm watching it. You're seeing it. And, Father, this church is seeing it. So, Father, help us to continue to be the restoration center that you've called us to be. Because you are in the business of restoration. And, Father, whatever your heartbeat is for, let our heartbeat for it too. And it's the people of this community to make a difference in their lives and show them the love of Jesus. Christ and help us to be fearless in our faith. Help us to just launch out and say, God, whatever you want to do, help us to, to, to side with you and, and, and move forward. Just like what we sang about, Father, that, that we will move forward in you. And Lord, we thank you for that. I pray right now as we, we dive into your word, I pray, Father, that you help us realize who you are a little bit more because we heard from you today. Thank you for the baptism today. Thank you for communion today. And Father, we just give you the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever been a waiter or a waitress? Uh, how, many, how many have been a waiter or a waitress in their lifetime? Okay. I, one time, my buddy, when I was in high school, he worked at, at, a, um, at the country club in Port St. Joe. And they were having this huge formal event at the country club okay and so what he asked me he called me up he was shorthanded he said hey would you like to earn a little extra money I'm like well sure I'd love to earn a little extra money you know so he said well meet me out at the country club and I'll put you to work so I went out to the country club and then I was in the back I was making salad for everybody and things were fine I didn't really have to go out and wait tables or anything like that well all of a sudden he comes in the back he said hey I need you to clean the tables off uh, so we can get ready for dessert. And I said, okay. So I walked outside and, and, and into the, the room where everybody was sitting into the restaurant area, and I was cleaning off the tables. Now keep in mind, this was a very formal event. Everybody was dressed to the nines. And so I was picking up a plate. I had a plate in this hand. I was picking up another plate, and I was bringing it around like this. And there was a cup of tartar sauce sauce just hanging on the edge of this plate okay and so I was like oh dear lord please don't let that thing fall off because I was right over a lady with jet black hair and a red dress as soon as I got right over her the tartar sauce decided to fall off it hit her jet black hair and started dripping down her red dress. I was, I just took, I just put the place down and I took off. They never saw me again. I said, there's not enough money worth it for that. You never see me again doing that again. And, and I can remember one time Christy telling me a story that when she was in college that she was serving sweet tea and she had a tray of, uh, full of glasses of sweet tea and tipped the tray and soaked a professor's wife. She said all she could remember was her dress just being incredibly wet. And so, you see, yeah, I mean, service is hard. Serving people is hard work. It's hard to do. If you don't believe me, just ask me and Christy. And probably you have some stories too. If you've been in the service industry, being a waiter or a waitress, you've probably had some things that have happened to you like that. But my point is this. Serving others is hard to do, but God asks us to do it, okay? Now, let me, let me show you in Scripture what I'm talking about. God tells us that in serving others, we are actually serving Him, okay? And here I want to read uh, Philippians 2, verses 3 through 11, and I want to show you what I mean by serving. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. 
Thinking of others is better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. You, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though He was God, listen to this, we talked about the Trinity, remember a few weeks ago? Jesus, though He was God, He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, He gave up His divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born a human being. When He appeared in human form, He humbled Himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated Him to the place of highest honor and gave Him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay? Powerful scripture on what it means to be a servant to other people. Jesus, deity, holy, just considered himself a slave to come down to this earth and die a criminal's death on a cross to serve you and I so that we could have an eternal relationship with God the Father that's his service towards us that's what he did to serve us so when he tells us to, to not to be selfish and don't try to impress other people but to be humble Thinking of others is better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. What he is telling us here is to die to self. And that's not easy for us to grab a hold of as human beings. Because there's a flesh side of us that says, it's all about me. Our culture continually tells us it's all about about us and what God is in the kingdom of opposites is saying it's not about you it's about other people and when you serve other people you're serving me and 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 servant listen to what the Bubba Bible says the message have you ever read in the message the Bubba Bible says it this way put yourself aside and help others get ahead don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Let me just stop here and say this. If you and I, as Christian Center Church, want to be a part of what God wants to do in this community through a restoration center, then we cannot look to ourselves. We have to be looking at other people. We have to be. We have to say, where are you at in your relationship with Christ? Where do you need healing? Do you need physical healing? Do you need emotional healing? Do you need spiritual healing? Because all of that is right here under the banner of Jesus Christ. But Jesus is asking His people to serve those people in a capacity that's supernatural, that goes against the way we normally think we should be in our worlds. Because it's really kind of, and I hate to say this, I'm the same way, but it's, it, it really revolves, the world revolves around me. We try not to be that way, don't we? We really try not to be that way. And some of you are probably going, well, you are way off. The world does not revolve around me. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. The world revolves around you. So when I say being a servant to others is hard, that's what I'm talking about. Because we get in the mindset that the world revolves around us and we don't look out for the interest of other people. That's why it's difficult to serve. But when we get past the notion that the world is not about me, it's about others, it's about God, then we can begin serving God with a joyful heart. And that's what we're going to talk about in just a second. He says this in the Bubba Bible. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of Himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of Himself that He had to cling to the advantages of the status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, He set aside the privileges of deity. I love the way that says that. He set aside the privileges of His deity and took on the status of a slave and became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. 
He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a a crucifixion. I've heard it said before this, God determines your greatness by how many people you serve, not by how many people serve you. In verse 7 in the NIV, it says that Christ made himself nothing. What a powerful statement that is. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, and everything in between made himself nothing to serve you and to serve me on the cross. And then the KJV, the King James, it says he emptied himself. I mean, he just emptied himself. Christ is the ultimate example in serving. I, I, I just, I, I, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privilege. He took the humble position of a slave, was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Do you understand that he is our ultimate example of servanthood? He really is. There's none like him. Jesus is the ultimate example in our lives. And when it comes to serving other people, we have a tendency to say, well, I don't know if I need to do that. Or I don't know if I should do that. Or what are they going to do with it? Or what is this going to happen? We have all these questions. And all of these questions keep us from truly serving other people. Do you think God... When Jesus was asked to die on the cross by God the Father, but God... But Father... Seriously, they're not going to... There's only going to be a handful of them that are going to accept this. Why are you asking me to do this? They're, they're ornery. They're, they're just... They're, they're human beings. And they, they, if they don't get their way, they get grouchy or they get pouty. And I mean, he could have had a thousand questions. But no, King Jesus said, Hey, this is what the Father asked me to do. So this is what I'm going to do to save humanity and mankind. And it's not just about spiritual... It it is about spiritual... um, About spiritual salvation. But I can't get it out of my head that it's, it's about restoration. I can't get that word out of my mind. It's about complete and whole restoration. That's what the blood of Jesus does for an individual who embraces what Jesus did on the cross as a servant. Complete and total restoration of your life. Complete and total restoration. And so Jesus is the ultimate example. But see, our human nature fights this. Okay? It's, it's human nature to fight this. I mean, think about John. Who, it was James and John in Mark chapter 10 where they were saying, they came up beside Jesus and said, hey, when we get to heaven, can I sit on your right hand and, you, and me sit on your left hand? You remember the story that the sons of thunder is what they were called. And they asked Jesus if they could sit on his right and left side when they got to heaven. Here's what Jesus says to them. Well, sure, guys, come on. That's fine. We'll just reign in power together. You know what he says to them? He says this in verse 43 of Mark chapter 10. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. Exactly opposite of the way we are wired. These are two of the twelve disciples. Jesus had been teaching them and they have been watching Him serve and serve and serve other people and they still come to Jesus and say, well, hey, can I sit on your right hand and my brother sit on your left hand side? Wouldn't that be cool? And they're like, Jesus is like, no. No, because whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. And the truth is, is we jockey for position. We really do. We jockey for position at work, or we jockey for position in our families or at church. Even Christian leaders 
I found myself this past weekend at this conference that Christy and I went to, and, and one of my heroes is John Ortberg, okay? And I don't know if you know who John Ortberg is, but he's written a lot of books, a lot of books that have helped me in my walk with Christ. Well, I'm sitting here, and here comes John Ortberg with his bag, just walking through, looking for the green room. That's where all the celebrities sit, you know. We're out there working like dogs, and they're out there in the green room eating bacon and cheese and everything else. And, he, and I'm thinking, oh, you can't touch these guys. And, and here he comes, and I just freak out. I'm like, oh, John Ortberg! <laughs> so I walk up to him, I said, well, hey, Mr. John. He goes, hey, how you doing? And I said, I'm good, how are you? And I'm a little nervous because this is one of my, you know, one of my giants here. And, and he's pulling this thing and, and, and uh, he said, walk with me. I'm trying to find the green room. And we just chatted. And he's a normal guy. And he loves Jesus. And he could care less about his celebrity status. It doesn't mean a thing to him. Do you know why it doesn't mean anything to him? Because he's so focused on serving other people that it doesn't bother him at all that he's some big, great speaker guy and writes a bunch of books. He's just a normal guy. And then I saw John Hagee walking through the lobby. Now, John Hagee, the Four Blood Moons guy, and this big old... I mean, as soon as he got up, we're sitting close to the front, and Christy's like, get your umbrella out because there's going to be some spitting going on. <laughs> Love Hagee. But he's walking through the lobby... And then his big bodyguard is with him. And I'm like, Pastor John, that was a great message. And he gives me one of these, you know, besides the smoking, you know, you shake and then you do this and then you normally do that. He didn't do that part, but he did the other two. And he's like, thanks, son, I appreciate that. And then there was a lady named Johnny Erickson Tata. I don't know if you know who she is, but when she was younger, she dove off a diving board, got in an accident, and was paraplegic. Right? Paraplegic? Quadriplegic. She can move her neck. She's in this thing. She comes... I'm, I'm hanging out, having a cup of coffee in this lobby, and she comes strolling through, and I had no idea who she was. She's in a wheelchair, and she's able to move her neck, but that's about it. And I thought to myself, I have no idea who that lady is, but she is beautiful. I could see the Holy Spirit all over her. And she was in a wheelchair because of this accident that she had years ago. And when she got up to speak the next day, I thought, oh, she's a speaker. And her name's Johnny Erickson Tata. I had no idea who she was. And she began to share with us how thankful she was that when that accident happened she was bitter she hated God she couldn't believe God would do this to her how many of us have been there I can't believe you would do this to me God God had a ultimate lesson in her life to teach her because she began to think well maybe I can be thankful maybe I can find something good out of this and maybe I can give God the glory for what He's doing in my life. So she started small. If when she was in the hospital, she said that if the, she found out that breakfast was coming down her side of the aisle, or her side of the whatever rooms, the hallway uh, first, then she would be thankful to God that her eggs would be warm. Now keep in mind, she can only move her neck. And she's thanking God that her eggs were warm. And she said, what birthed in me was the ability to be thankful for little things. How many times do we look past the little things? She has to get help getting dressed every single day. She has to get help going to the restroom every single day. And here she is and she's so thankful that God is using her. Why? Not to be some great, awesome, wonderful celebrity. She's thankful that God gets to use her to help and serve other people. That's where she finds her joy. 
She finds her joy in servanthood. She finds her joy in giving her life and her testimony up on a stage and saying, be, be thankful for the little things in your life. Be thankful for the, the big things in your life. But just be thankful because God loves you and He's in control. And all you have to do is be thankful and take it from me. I'm a quadriplegic and I can only move my head and I'm so thankful that God gets to use me in helping other people. Powerful, powerful testimony. But here's what I want you to understand. Servants look for a way to serve others. They're constantly looking for a way to serve somebody else. That's what a servant does. I mean, verse 4 in Philippians 2 says, forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Forget yourself long enough to lend a hand. A servant is ready to serve at all times. And it might interfere with plans, but that's okay because God wants you to serve. And God is dealing with me on this. I hope that through this message, He starts to deal with your heart. Am I serving other people the way I should? Because we get so much joy out of serving other people. Servants find joy in serving other people. Psalm 102 says, serve the Lord with gladness. I have a friend that was asked by his parents a long time ago what he wanted for his birthday. And there was a family in their church that was just, had nothing. And he found out in a reasonable way that his fa this family needed blankets for their bed, and this was in an area where it was very cold. It wasn't Florida. Um, and, and blankets for their bed and warm coats for their children. And so he told his mom and dad that what he wanted for his birthday, because he had pretty much everything, that he wanted warm blankets and coats for those kids for his birthday. So that's what his parents bought. They bought for his birthday present warm blankets and coats for this family. And, and, and he, I can remember asking him, how did that make you feel? He said, Tyler, it was the best birthday present I've ever gotten in my life. Because he went beyond himself and he served the needs of other people. And planted a seed of God's love in that family's life. That's what it means to serve. Servants put other needs, others' needs before their own. Most people choose not to serve others because they feel that their needs are more important. Jesus, th listen to this. John 13 says this, verses 3 and 4. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under His power and that He had come from God and was returning to God. So He got up from the meal, this is at the Last Supper, took off His outer clothing and wrapped a towel around His waist. He was about to wash the disciples' feet. So here's what I want you to understand. When you are confident of who you are in Christ, then you will have the freedom to serve others. I want you to understand that. That is the takeaway message today. When you are confident in who you are in Jesus Christ, then you will be free to serve other people. And if we have a church, an army of people that are confident in who they are in Jesus Christ, then all of us will be free to serve somebody else. And that's the kingdom of God at work. That's the kingdom. Servants don't keep score. Okay? Let me say this. We must never ever get into the mindset that we're competing with each other. Servants don't compete, they serve. We're all in this together. There's no room for competition in the body of Christ. Never have it in your heart that you are serving more than someone else or, or what you do to serve is, is better than what somebody else does to serve. Never get in the mindset of competing. We're all servants. Because of Jesus and the ultimate example that He gave to us as servants, we're just servants. You serve wherever God tells you and asks you to serve. You just serve other people. And we don't ask questions and we don't make it a competition. And this is what I want to wrap up with. Servants stay connected.
connected to the source of servanthood. Matthew 10, 43 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. When the boys were little, we were playing one day. And Zach was probably about five and Jake, well, six, and Jake was about two. And I, out of the corner of my eye, I saw Jay, uh, Zach charging after Zach, or Jake, Zach charging after Jake, with a plastic sword and I didn't know what he was going to do with it so I scooped Jake up and I held him like this and I turned my back and Zach just starts pounding my back with this plastic sword and it hurt I mean, he was just going to town he was after Jake but I grabbed him I'm like son I am saving your life right now and, and he, he was looking up at me and Jake just had this smile on his face like, I'm safe, all is well. I was the one taking the hits for him. Let me tell you something. If you're here today and you don't believe this, Jesus wants to take the hit for you. He wants to scoop you up in His arms and let the enemy in the world pound on His back while He holds you safely in His arms. Because that's the kind of servant that He is. So my question today is this. Do you have that kind of a relationship? Do you know Jesus? Do you know that He is so desperately wanting to pick you up into His arms and let the world bang on His back for you? He did that for you on the cross. And you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be ready you don't have to say, well, I'm working on it. I'm getting there. I'm slowly getting there. If you have not received Jesus as your, as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation for you. It's a beautiful thing. And we're going to have an we're gonna have a, um, altar call in just a minute. And you're going to have the opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. And I want to pray for us as a church. I want us to embrace servanthood. I want us to get it. I want us to own it. I want us to live it so that God can be glorified through us. Let's pray. Father, you are so good. And we are so excited about what you want to do. But Father, help us to look past ourselves to a hurting community that desperately needs You. Help us to embrace those people that need restoration. And Father, that doesn't mean we don't still need restoration. You're restoring us daily. But Father, help us to just embrace the fact that You uh, want to use us in Your story to help other people spiritually, emotionally, physically by your power and your strength and your might Father we love you and we thank you for letting us be a part of what you're doing in Jesus name I pray